According to the CDC, 1.5 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year. By 2030, that number is expected to reach 55 million, costing over $600 billion annually. And it's not just in America. Around the world, one in 11 people are now living with diabetes. Doctors tell us the leading cause is insulin resistance, when cells supposedly stop responding to insulin, leaving glucose trapped in the bloodstream. But there's a problem. This theory doesn't hold up under biological scrutiny. If insulin resistance were real, why would it affect only three kinds of cells, muscle, liver, and fat, but not others like skin, bone, or brain cells? And if resistance were truly happening, what causes millions of cells to suddenly stop recognizing insulin, only to flip back after pregnancy or weight loss? The inconsistencies are striking, and for decades, no one has been able to explain why this happens. Here's what we do know. Your cells rely on glucose to produce energy, a molecule called ATP, your body's fuel. When you eat, glucose enters your bloodstream, and insulin acts like a messenger, signaling cells to let glucose in. In people with type 2 diabetes, glucose levels in the blood become elevated. But is it really because the cell doesn't hear the insulin? My research and decades of patient observation suggest otherwise. Think of your muscle cells as hybrid engines. They can run on two fuels, glucose or fatty acids. When you haven't eaten for a while, your muscles switch to burning fat. That's normal, but if your fat cells become full, which happens from years of overeating grain-based foods like bread, pasta, and rice, fatty acids begin to spill into your bloodstream. Now your muscles are surrounded by a flood of fatty acids, a constant fuel source, so they prefer to burn fat instead of glucose. That means glucose just stays in your blood, even though insulin is working perfectly fine. This is what I call the fatty acid burn switch. It appears to be insulin resistance, but it's not. It's fuel preference. As the fatty acid burn switch continues over time, blood sugar levels begin to rise, first after meals, then even during fasting. Over time, the pancreas keeps releasing insulin, trying to help, but glucose still isn't used. Eventually, this leads to high blood sugar and type 2 diabetes. This theory explains things the theory of insulin resistance never could, why both obese and thin people can get diabetes. Why one sibling in a family can get diabetes and another one doesn't. Why pregnant women develop and then recover from gestational diabetes. Why even children whose cells are young and healthy are developing type 2. It's not a disease of insulin resistance. It's a result simply of fuel imbalance. So what can you do about it? The answer is more straightforward than you might think. To stop your body from burning fatty acids excessively, reduce the foods that flood your bloodstream with glucose, especially grains and grain flour products. That means cutting back on bread, pasta, rice, tortillas, chips, muffins, and baked goods. Instead, focus on whole foods, vegetables, fruits, eggs, dairy, meat, fish, and nuts. In just eight weeks, many people who've made this change have seen their blood sugar return to healthy levels without medication. Discover the full story in diabetes, the real cause and the right cure. Your body can heal. You just need to know how. Order your copy today at drjohnonhealth.com and start your journey to lasting wellness.